Uh, welcome back. Um, to start with today, take a look at this here. You can see how there's reflections and lights. All of these lights are copies of each other. They're what are called linked duplicates. Um, you do that with Alt-D to make a linked duplicate. And what's important about this is I can't affect these lights individually. They're really just one light. So if I come over here and change the energy, which takes a second to happen because there's so many lights, um, you can see it's now 510. If I click on any of these other lights, they'll also be 510. They're basically all the same light but in different positions. Uh, it's really useful because then if you want to change the level of light in every room with these standard lights, you just have to change one thing. But it's also not good if you want one room to have bright lighting and another room to have dim lighting. Um, and in the same fashion, all of these chairs here are linked. They're all the same chair. So if I change the uh, something about the, the root chair, it'll change all the chairs. Again, this is, this is pretty handy at times, unless you want one chair to be different from the other chairs, and then it's not good at all. You can see these chairs, they look fairly complex in a way, kind of 70s space age. Um, and here I'm using a um, subsurface modifier. It basically takes a square and makes it into a circle by adding more surfaces. And this is my original um, chair here. It's just a very simple chair. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just uh, one, two, three, four um, squ uh, blocks. And they're not even stuck together. They're just individual blocks. And then I do a few subsurfaces and I get my space age looking chair. Not at all hard to make. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to mention the height of the back of these chairs and the width and whatnot. Y unless you get out your tape measure, you're, you're going to have a hard time figuring out how big everything is. How big is a chair? How big is a, you know, a bookcase? How big is a table? <clears throat> a really good solution to that is to get a copy of the IKEA catalog and they have the dimensions of everything. It's very handy. And they also have, you know, all the basic types of furniture, so you get some good ideas. And you probably don't want to do an exact copy of IKEA furniture. I'd imagine that's some sort of copyright or patent violation. Perhaps not, I don't know. But in any case, it's a great basis for making things the correct sizes. Um, you can also see that here, you can see the shininess of the floors and the reflections of the lights. That's because I've turned on GL, GLSO mode texturing. It's kind of like a, a game texturing type of thing. And you also have to turn it on here, textured. If I go back to solid, then it's much quicker. The display updates much more quickly. Um, this has a lot to do with the fact that I've got an old graphics card. If I had one of these $300 cards that were made yesterday, I probably would just always leave it in textured mode. Although sometimes this can give you funky lighting and, and uh, other problems. And then wireframe mode, of course, it looks like a mess here, but it can be very handy when you need to see through things and find specific points. And then bounding box just shows the shapes of the boxes, the, the basic functional area of each box. I don't use that very often, but it's good to know because over here we have the pivot point, and this is used in translating, scaling, rotation, um, I don't know, some other things in that, that uh, group. And bounding box is one of the ways they can be affected, or active elements. So I've made some ladders, and you can see the ladders here. They're maybe not the world's best ladders. I didn't bother to go look at how big a ladder is. I just kind of eyeballed it and hoped this was a decent ladder to put in my spaceship. But to make a ladder, it looks like a lot of work. There's a lot of pieces and stuff, but it's actually not that hard. So I'm just going to do a top view. I'll just go right here, side view. Again, you can see the 3D cursor is way down here. I want to get my ladder right about there. Shift A, I'm going to add a grid. 
top view. I'm going to close this window here, join area this way. Um, and back to this stupidity here, erase it, and re add it so that I can play with these numbers. Ugh, added the wrong thing. Now we can play with these numbers. Um, a ladder basically has one side, rungs with holes, and another side. So we really only need one, two, three um, divisions here, or four, four lines, um, and ten up and down is okay. So we'll keep this. So then the first thing we do is we switch over to this mode and we get rid of this. No, before I do that, let's add one more. There. Ugh, God. <laughs> Did I do that the first time? I must have. I wonder why I keep switching back like that. That's weird. Okay, and now I'm going to remove only faces. And so now we kind of have a ladder. But naturally, ladder sides don't look like that. So we want to select all of these. And here also. And I want to scale individual origins. So I'm going to scale in the X. And there we go. And now I'm going to select all. Oh, I also forgot to turn on the skin keys for you. There. Um, so A for all. And now I'm going to scale the X again because my ladder looks too fat. Right now, we are in the box. I'm just going to go to that. And everything scales. Now, again, um, our ladder rungs are way too big. So, grab the ladder rungs. Individual origins, scale Y in this case. And there you have it. One nice ladder. Although perhaps ladders have the, the top poking up a little bit and the bottom poking up a little bit. But you guys can figure that out and scale it how you want. Then the next thing is do to do is select all, get a side view here on it, extrude and give our ladder some thickness. So there you have it. One nice looking ladder. Not a perfect ladder, but you get the idea and you can see how quickly you can make these types of shapes. This could also be a set of windows on a, a row house or many other things. It's good to understand these elements. Um, I recommend that you make grids and you play with all these different possibilities and also play with this. This um, changes from manipulating the object centers to not, op not manipulating them. Um, you can look in the manual and there's also some videos where guys are just playing around with only So, the next thing I wanted to go on about go back to object mode. I don't need this. I've already got my ladder, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, as you probably saw when I rendered this, 
or also when I was in textured mode. All of these things now have textures. My walls also have textures. If I bring in some walls here. Yeah, one thing I don't need. Oh, maybe I just have the walls hidden, I think. Oh, it's been a while since I've looked with this. Yeah, they're just hidden. Um, these are all textured and um, the way I did that is pretty easy. I went to a website that has textures. And if you just do a search for um, Blender uh, materials, you'll come up with a lot of different websites with Blender materials. And I happen to like this one. They say they're working on it, updating it. It'll be nice when it's updated because it's really handy. Um, and here you can just say you want uh, to make your chair out of wood and you can search and it comes up with all these different types of wood. You then click on this and you save the blend file and then you go to your, um, your object. Doesn't really matter what we select, say we select the top here and we go to materials. Um, as you see right now, it's knocked down ceiling, which is um, this is the, the ceiling of this level. And it's one that I imported from that same website. And I just appended the file to this one. And you just simply go into, I don't know where I stored it, I, maybe it's on the desktop. Uh, in downloads, doesn't really matter. Anyway, you just find your blend file, you go in there, you click on the material that you want, and it could be in any blend file, it doesn't really matter if it's the one you downloaded or not. And you select it, materials, or the material, I don't know what that is. And then I would just uh, uh, link it, and I don't want to link this one in, so I'll just cancel. And um, if you have Right here is a new material, and you just go here, and you'll see a list of materials. And then you just select your material. I don't want to select any material because I don't want to actually do this, but say I selected this material, which is my gold chair color. I should probably ch change the name here from material to something like gold chair material. But I don't want to keep this, so I'm just going to delete that material. Um, the other thing I did was added some lights up here. This is a this light in particular is interesting. It's a Heme light, and what that does is gives all the material a little bit of light. You notice I put it at 0 0.01. If um, I put it really bright, then everything's going to look flat, like the light is just emitting from everything, and that's not good. But just giving everything a little bit of light often makes the scene look way better. Um, it's as if you have ambient light in the room when in fact there isn't. The other big light I have here is um, a sun and it just kind of gives a general lighting to the whole scene and um, I have sky presets and whatnot and atmosphere which gives you a little bit of a mist effect and in real life on a planet the further you look into the distance the more there's a haze that makes things change color. They either get lighter or darker in the distance and this simulates that effect and we'll make anything planet side look much more realistic. And in space, I often leave it on. Um, I know that's not uh, correct. It's bad physics. However, our eyes are designed and function best with an atmosphere on a planet. When we see things in space, the shadows are too harsh and we just don't like it. And our eyes don't like it, it looks bad. So we want things to look good, even though that isn't cr scientifically correct, we want them to look good. And you can kind of pretend like there were two or three moons off in the distance giving light from different directions and softening shadows and whatnot. Yeah, it's kind of faking it, but what the heck. Um, I think that's all. Hope this video proves helpful. Thank you for watching and please leave feedback.